Hello, I'm Melanie King and I'm an artist based in Ramsgate in the UK. I'm currently doing a PhD at the Royal College of Art in London. I'm a co-director of Super Collider, Lumen Studios and the London Alternative Photography Collective. And the image you can see is my darkroom based in Ramsgate. I'm going to show a series of images produced using the anthotype process. This image is from a residency in Ireland called Lay of the Land in 2019. This image was created by using really large metal grids that were placed down onto the grass and left for three weeks. And where the sun couldn't reach the grass, it stayed bleached. This was a collaboration between six other artists and we were corresponding to the idea of the amount of depth a miner would have had to go into the ground. So if you can see in the background, there is a fenced off area, and this is where the miners would have traveled 130 meters underground. So we're hoping by people walking down this green strip of grass, that they would envision the kind of distances that these miners would have had to take to go underground. I then did a residency at Hoya in Almeria, Spain. And during this residency, I wanted to make anthotypes of the Pine Island Glacier, which had just detached from the Antarctic. I wanted to show this using a process which is environmentally friendly, instead of using processes that are bad for the environment. This is the area in which I was doing the residency. This is Almeria, Spain and it's one of the driest landscapes in Europe. And I thought it was significant at making the work here because it's very difficult for plants to be able to grow. And currently this area is setting up a sustainable dark room where there is a garden where you can use lots of different elements for photography. So I really recommend checking that out. And hopefully I'll be able to go back there and see the dark room for myself one day. These are the resulting works. So an anthotype, if you're not sure, is a print made from plant matter, which is mixed with water and or vodka. And this releases a chlorophyll. You can then strain this mixture and get all of the pieces out of it and coat a piece of paper. I usually do about four different coats and leave it to dry between each section. And then I use a positive transparency and expose that to sunlight. These images were created using spinach, but you can use lots of different things. Spinach is one of the best ones to try first as it's really quick. It takes about six hours in strong sunlight. So I really recommend checking that out. And I used a very fine uh, paper called Hanimula Platinum Rag. And this helped me get the very strong details that you see here. And the types aren't archival. They fade over time and I was really excited about the idea of anthotypes fading over the course of the exhibition. So this is a image also from the Pine Island Glacier and you can see that I have got quite a little bit of detail on the actual print. This work was commissioned by the Grantham Art Prize which was a collaboration between Imperial College London and the Royal College of Art. So they were shown at the Imperial College London as part of the Great Exhibition Road Festival. And they were also shown at the Royal College of Art in the Battersea campus. And they were shown on these plinths so people could go up really close to them and see them on the plinths. I've recently started a project called Submerged Landscapes. So I'm based in Ramsgate where you can see that little arrow. Um, and I'm currently looking at how climate change is going to change the landscape around here. So everything that you see in red is likely to be submerged by tidal rising over the next 10 years. So if you zoom in a little bit closer, you can see that I'm actually going to be living somewhere that is an island. So all of that part colored in red is going to be flooded. And I don't think there's very much we can do to stop that. That it used to be an island before, but it was drained um, for farming and marshlands. And now it's likely to be reclaimed by the sea again. So I was inspired to document these areas that are going to go underwater and show them using the materiality of the sea. 
So I use seaweed to make a photographic developer to represent some of their areas. But I also made anthotypes using sea spinach, which is a plant that is growing around planet coastlines. So this is Pegwell Bay, which is a nature reserve and it's going to be underwater quite soon. This is also from Pegwell Bay, um, a nature reserve that is incredibly beautiful and it's really a real shame that it might be taken over by the ocean anytime soon. This again is an anthocyte using sea spinach and this was made as part of a video on my YouTube channel where I show lots of different processes. So if you're excited about trying this process, then I recommend going to my YouTube channel. I've also used blackberries and I've used blackberries last year when they were out in season. And this is the painted pieces of paper. I then left them for three weeks and this was the result. So very recently, I've been doing a residency with Lee Nanny Alkinsell, um, who's based at the metallurgy department at the University of Birmingham. And we have recently got a grant from the Royal Academy of Engineering to do a project engineering sustainable photographic processes. And as part of this residency and as part of this project, uh, Hannah Jones made this amazing piece of work over the summer as an intern. Um, so I'd really recommend looking that up. And she recently presented this as part of a conference. Um, so what she did is she tried out anthotypes and cyanotypes and measured lots of different frequencies of light on the photographic paper. And my favourite part of the research that she did here was to explain a little bit about the anthotype process from a kind of scientific perspective. So Jones compared artificial and natural light sources on several plant-based emulsions to see if it would be possible to speed up the anthotype development process, which is normally done in natural light. She used different light sources on turmeric emulsions. The baseline emulsification formula, process and exposure times for natural light were taken from anthotypes. Emulsions were typically made using 20 milliliters of alcohol and 50 to 75 grams of plant material. Rhubarb and beetroot demonstrated different coloring patterns and clarity as shown in figure one, which I'll show later, due to the presence of anthocyanin, and when exposed to light, encourages pigment destruction. Exposure time required depended on the photosensitive chemical present within the emulsion, such as chlorophyll in leafy plants and curcumin in turmeric. So you can see Hannah Jones' uh, meter readings here showing natural light with a UV meter, natural light illuminance, natural light solar meter, artificial floodlight, artificial light, which is a strong UV lamp, and an artificial light, which is a weak UV lamp, which was just a UV torch. And you can see her results on the right hand side uh, using spinach, rhubarb, dill, beetroot, and mint. So Hannah's conclusions were that the two best sources for anthotype emulsions were spinach and turmeric, due to their short exposure time requirements, accessibility and clarity of print. Also, artificial light had a stronger impact on turmeric anthotypes in comparison to spinach. Cheap sources of artificial light were inferior to sunlight. Thank you very much for watching my talk. You can see more at my website, which is melaniek.co.uk, my Instagram, which is melaniekatking, Twitter, which is melaniekaking, and Facebook, Melanie King Artist. Um, I'd also like to say Nettie Edwards is also doing a talk as part of this conference. So please check out her work. Nettie Edwards is one of the best anthotype artists that I know of. Thank you very much.